What's up YouTube, Dale here from Zephyr, and today I am bringing you an update to 60 card light swans. That's right, this deck has everything, maybe even the kitchen sink. It's absolutely insane what just one card of that grassroots greener does to decks like this. Now this deck can be played on a 40 card engine if you want to as well, and what I'm going to do is I'll show you the 20 cards that you can sub out. It is basically 20 cards that are light swarm cards, it's all orientated around the light swarms themselves, and then the rest of the day is just loads of mini engines that benefit when they are milled or help you mill, which is exactly what the deck wants to do. So with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming content. We're going to dive headfirst into the profile, starting off with the Light Swan cards, beginning with Light Swan Draglin. So you're going to be maxing out on your Light Swan Draglin. You pretty much want to max out on all of the Light Swan monsters you play, bar one. Um, and there is one that I'm missing a copy of that I'll talk about in a second. But obviously the idea is that with stuff like your Draglin and mainly your Weiss, these are your two cards, it's pretty much going to get everything ticking that will start your mills for you. Ideally you want to be starting off with Weiss in my opinion because you still need a light swan in the graveyard to trigger off your Draglin in the best possible scenarios. But the idea is that both of these together straight away will ideally lead you into Minerva or basically Weiss plus Evil Wolf or Felice will do that for you. Setting you up Minerva, setting you up an additional rank 4 so it just gets you to start your mills going and that's before you start even touching on your extra engines that are going to help you extend your board, add more mills, add protection you name it, it's absolutely insane. Speaking of which, you do play Triple Wolf of the Light Swan Beast, and then I would personally be playing Free Felice. I couldn't find my third copy. Um, what I'd probably take out is you can probably put Raiden down to one if you wanted to, and that's where the third Felice will come into play. I've still gone with two Raiden. Even then, you still have other flex cards in the deck that you could cut down. Like you can cut out one of the Horus monsters that I'll show you as well to fit in the third Felice. And the reason for that is you're going to play so many cards that are going to mill you cards from deck to the grave. And when cards like Felice and Wolf are not hard once per turns, when you're able to spin them back into the deck and go again, you're just going to keep giving yourself free level 4 fodder. It's absolutely insane. On top of that as well, because of the way we're making this build work, you're going to be using loads of monster effects to trigger those mills, which is why Felice becomes even more consistent and even more effective. The last of the Light Swan-esque cards are going to be Punishment Dragon and Judgment Dragon. They are not Light Swan by name, but technically Light Swan by theme. The idea is that you have the ability to get to both of these off of the back of the Draglin. You're Punishment Dragon is going to be more of a recycler for all of your other engines, and of course your Judgment Dragon is more of your absolute boss monster itself, so you've got the options of going first and second with these two cards right here. For the other Light Swan cards, we are playing Triple Charge of the Light Brigade. So this one obviously allows you to send the top three cards of your deck to the grave and then add a level four or lower Light Swan. So basically all of your other Light Swans are now increased by three and it isn't a hard once per turn at all. It's not even a soft once per turn, so you get to recycle this as many times as you want and keep going. We're then playing two Solar Recharge. Now this is one of the cards you could arguably cut down for the third Felice, just because you're playing a 60 card deck, only a third of it is gonna be Light Swarm Monsters. So you are gonna have less chance of resolving this or like successfully opening up. Like to open up this and a Light Swarm, it's gonna be a lot more minimal, um, which is why you could arguably play one of it because you shouldn't need to rely on it that heavily, but it's still an incredibly good card. Discard a Light Swarm, draw two, mill two, is pretty much everything you can ask for. The last Light Swan card we play is the one Aegis. Now the reason I play the one with Aegis is for the pure fact that it's just still really kind of cool. Like I said, I ideally wanted to make this Light Swan focused. You can cut this out again, this is where the Felice will come into play. But being able to end your board on Light Swan monsters can set you up multiple forms of negations. Not to mention you want cards in your deck that are going to benefit you when they are milled. Whether they be resetting themselves, whether they be summoning themselves back to the board. You want to make sure that every time you are milling you are maximizing your opportunity in order to extend the board or protect the board from that point on. Uh, now for the first of the engines, the first engine we are playing is Triple Imseti, followed up by the one Blessing and the one um, Guidance, and of course two King Sark. Now the only issue with this particular engine is you need to get to King Sark as it is very rare that you're going to be able to have the ability to recycle it from the graveyard. Uh, I have been trying to cook up a way of utilising White Forest in this deck, which it could be done, but you have to go a little bit out of your way. And the reason I like that is because the White Forest can actually loop back the King Sarcophagus, which is really kind of cool. But the reason you're going to play the Horus Engine is not only can it set you up mills by going into the Zombie Vampire, but it also sets you up protection in replacement for Be um, not Beatrice, sorry, replacement for your Appalooza by being able to get into your Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord. Without Appalooza being so easily accessible to everyone right now, and without the ability to create monster negates as easily accessible for everyone, I feel that Nibiru is going to play a massive part in the upcoming format. 
Now this deck is built so it's very aggressive and it has loads of points where it can kind of extend past the Nibiru, but if there are points where you can get to a protection from a Nibiru early doors anyway, it then means the rest of your cards can be utilized for that mill factor of the deck. And that's the reason that I'm playing three different Horus names, because there will be times where they might want to take rid of the Inseti with a Beastial, and you still want to be able to have access to a Water and a Wind that can't be Beastial to still give you access to that rank 8 should you want it. Whether that rank 8 be defensive, whether you go into a link 2, whether you just leave these guys on the board as your aggressor to push for an OTK, the Horus engine is absolutely insane, and it's going to be more easily accessible when we get the Megatins in about two weeks' time, because Imseti has been guaranteed as a reprint. I would be very surprised if they don't reprint the King Sark, and the only one that you really need to be reprinted is the Happy, which deserves an upgrade to be honest, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's in there as well. Moving on to the second engine. For the second engine, we are playing the Beastials. So for the Beastials, we are playing three Lubellion, followed up by the one Saranir, the one Magnemute, and of course the one Druid Swarm, partnered off with the one Branded Regained. Now obviously the idea behind this is this gives you technical hand traps in the deck that can also act as extenders. They can act as forms of disruption. And then of course you've got Regained, which can act as a form of recurrence, as well as a form of disruption, because you actually just recycle some of your Beastials from the graveyard. But being able to recycle some of your monsters that have been banished can be massively helpful for you. Not to mention, again, the issue with the same with this, like the King Sark, is once it hits the graveyard, it's very tricky to get it back. So that's something you might want to be looking into, but with a 60 card deck, you want to really bury it, and then get access to your Lubellion to get to it from the deck, and then that's how you're going to be able to push your plays further forward. In order to support the access to the Beastial Engine, we are playing two Seifert. It's rare that you actually even want to normal summon it. You do really just want to have it milled into the graveyard because you get to banish it from the graveyard to target a level eight or uh, dark, level eight, light or dark, um, dragon monster in your graveyard and then add it to your hand. So this will give you access to your Lubellion, it can give you access to your Punishment Dragon and your Judgment Dragon. So it just acts as even more fodder to recycle what you might need. The next engine we are playing is the Chaos Engine. So for the Chaos Engine, we've got the one Creator, the one Valkyrie, uh, Collapse Serpent, White Wyvern Buster, and Levianir, backed up by the Chaos Space. So again, this is a very tidy six card engine. The idea behind all of this is you've got an aggressor and a form of disruption in the form of the Levianir. You've got an extender in the form of the Chaos Creator or like a double extender because it can get, let you bring back some of your banished cards. And then you just have general extenders in the form of the Collapse Serpent, White Wyvern, and Valkyrie. Now if you wanted to cut this down to a 40 card deck, that's where you'd probably be keeping in the Chaos cards because they're still very effective and the Beastials, but you might want to consider cutting down something like the Fiendsmiths that I'm going to show you in a second, and of course the Horus. So you can play around with these engines as you see fit, take out the ones you don't personally like, put in ones that you do like. Another option in place of the Fiendsmith engine can very well be the Thunder Dragon version, and the idea between the two is Thunder Dragons lead you to Colossus and give you a bit more benefit if you activate Left Arm Offering to search out one of your power spells. Whereas the Fiendsmiths just give you a bit more of a balance for going first and second, and the Fiendsmiths will still be able to set you up a rank 6 play, which is going to allow you to mill 5 from your deck and 5 from your opponent's deck. I'll show you how you're going to do that towards the end of the video once you see the extra deck. So the last engine that we play, bar the just generic support cards for the deck, is of course the Fiendsmith engine, so 3 Engraver, 1 Lari, and then the 1 Tract. I'm not really going to spend much time on this, but the idea is that if you mill your engraver, you've got a level 6 that can come back that can help you go into link plays or rank 6 plays. Obviously, Lori is going to be that free sum that you're going to need in order to get into some of your link plays as well. And then Tract is insanely important for the deck because it lets you add a Light Fiend monster from the deck to the hand and then discard a card. So what else is a Light Fiend that is also a Light Swarm monster? You guessed it. Weiss is a light fiend. So if you really, really wanted to, at the very least, you could cut out the engravers and just play free tract in order to search out a Weiss, uh, Weiss or of course search you out a lorry as well. So you do have ways of kind of making this a little bit more budget while also giving you more access to a Weiss in a 60 card version because of how important this card is. Obviously you do need to be a little bit careful as this is only going to be as important as the other lights ones you have in the hand. But if you're like, whoa, engravers are way too expensive for me, I'm not about to drop like 180 to 200 pound just for this engine here. Well, that's fine. You can still go for Tract. Tract still gives you access to Weiss. Uh, Weiss? Weiss? <laughs> I keep getting it, like, in the back of my head, I keep seeing this as um, Weiss from Dragon Ball. It's the only reason I keep calling it Weiss when I know it's Weiss. But the idea is, it's still there. There's other synergies towards the engine, bar just milling off the engraver and going from there. So then for your generic other mill cards that are just going to help you disrupt or extend or everything else in between, you've got your Keldo and the Medora, which just helps you recycle some of the resources. So that's when you're going to be able to start recycling stuff like your Wolves and Felice and then use them again and again and again. 
And then of course we do play triple Mali. So obviously the idea behind this is you mill this, you banish it, you summon a copy. You get that copy off the board as either XYZ material, which when we get to the rank six, you'll see and understand how effective that's gonna be, even without Beatrice. And then you banish it and give you another monster back to the board that can get you into another rank six or can help you move into synchro plays or even link climb as well. And then we have a small selection of power spells. Like I said, with this particular deck, you wanna make sure that you're minimizing the cards are not gonna benefit benefit you as much when they are milled so that you can benefit the most from the rest of the cards, especially in a 60 card version. So we've gone with two true tactic thrust followed up by single one-off power cards because ironically, they are at one. So you're gonna be going with a Foolish Berry, you're gonna be going with a Reasoning, you're gonna be going with that Grass that's greener, and then of course you're gonna be going with a that bl uh, that bl the Black Goat that laughs. Ooh, get there eventually. But the other is Frost can get you access to any of these power cards. It can also get you access to the power cards in the form of um, Tracked into Chaos Space as well. It can get you into Charge of the Light Brigade. It can get you into um, Solar Recharge. It gives you access to all of that. And the chances are when you're making plays like this, it's very rare that you're gonna get stopped by just an Imperm. If your opponent opens up any other hand trap like Ashes or anything along those lines, they will definitely be able to drop them on you. The last card you'd wanna consider adding in will of course be Triple Tactic Talents, because again, this can be one of the ones that you don't wanna be playing multiples of it, because if you mill it, that's it. There's nothing gonna happen with it. You can't get it back. You can't do anything with it. Whereas with tactics, you wanna play multiples of it because it technically then acts as a second and third copy of these if they hand trap you. If they don't hand trap you, again, you don't wanna be clogging down on Frost because if they're not gonna be activated for you or they're not gonna be useful for you, they're just dead cards that you're gonna to want to ultimately discard. But the idea is going first or second, this card can be very important for you and that's the main way you're gonna get into that grass that's greener. Yes, of course, like I said before, you can take these three out and go for left arm offering, which would give you direct access to that grass that's greener. The issue is you're going to be banishing your entire hand to do so and you can't set spells and traps to turn you activate that card so it's going to be a little bit more specific and that's where I would highly advise you putting in the Thunder Dragons so if you do have to activate something like Left Arm Offering and if your opponent does stop it you will still be able to benefit by banishing the Thunder Dragons to extend your board and then work your way into a Colossus. So that's it for the entire 60 card build. Like I said, the one thing that I would like to change about this that I'm currently missing is the third Felice. If I obviously found my third Felice, it would definitely be going in. Um, and then that's where you probably sacrifice the Trill Tactic talent instead, just to kind of give you um, more consistency when you're milling. Like I said, you want to maximize your ability that your mills are always going to be successful or as successful as they possibly can be, especially in a deck like this that is massively factored towards RNG. So moving on to the extra deck, we'll start off with the Synchros. Of course, we are gonna be playing the one Minerva, the Athena Light Swan. Love this card, absolutely amazing, does everything you need to, gives you mills, gives you the capability to, um, well, I say it gives you mills. It gives you the ability to directly send two Light Swans from deck to the grave, which then ultimately sets you up with either another Synchro play or another rank four play, or even a link two play, which leads you into your Fiendsmith play, which leads you into the rank six play, which then leads you into five more mills. So just being able to go off the back of this, you're either gonna mill free off of the back of the rank four Minerva, or you're going to be able to mill three or an additional five as you've worked your way into the Fiendsmith engine as well. And again, like I said, I'll show you that in a short second. For the rest of the synchros, we are playing the one Omega followed up by the one Bestial Dispatter and of course the one Chaos Angel. Now, so the idea between, uh, behind these two is Omega can let you recycle some of your Banished Light Swans that you might want to be putting back into the graveyard. And then Dispatter gives you that ability that if you activate Omega, uh, you can bring it back and then Omega again and rip your opponent for two cards, which is completely bonkers. But imagine if your opponent hand traps you twice and you're still able to get into Dispatter, still able to use the effect of being able to banish the Omega twice. It then leaves them with one card past their top deck and you're still gonna have at least the negate off the back of the dispatcher as well. So you're gonna have so much resource, it's absolutely insane. Uh, moving on to, let's go with the XYZs, because I think the XYZs will, um, will lead us into the ideal scenario. So, for the rank eight, you do play the one rank eight in the form of the number 90 Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord, and of course, the Zombie Vampire. So the idea is if you don't fear Nibiru, you go straight to Zombie Vampire, you mill four from your deck, four from your opponents, and then get an extension to the board. If you do fear it, you're gonna go for the Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord, and there are multiple ways of getting into the Zombie Vampire, because you can overlay something like an Athena, you can overlay something like an Omega with any of your other Horus monsters. And if you really wanted to, you could put in the fourth Horus name so that you can ultimately get two rank eights on the board. So you'll get your protector and you'll get your mill, but then you're really relying that the mills are hit successfully in order to continue to build your board. If you do something like that, because the Horus cards will rip most of the cards out of your own hand. 
The rank fours we play are Daguerre's to trigger some of the effects we might need to be able to refresh our hand a little bit, set up some cards in the graveyard and then be able to push, push further forward from there. And then of course you've got the one Minerva which is just generically ideal for milling your cards, but also what you want to try and be doing is milling your Light Swarm monsters to draw cards. That's going to be a little bit less successful in a 60 card version because obviously your chances of hitting those Light Swarms is going to be a lot lower, but the idea is still there. And then the rank six that pretty much brings this together with the Fiendsmith, and that is a very old card in the form of Pilgrim Reaper. So for those of you unfamiliar with this, this is a generic rank six. It gains 200 attack and defense for every dark monster in either player's graveyard. So obviously you're gonna be able to put loads of darks in the graveyard anyway. You get to detach your material from this card. Each player sends the top five cards of their deck to the graveyard or their entire deck if less than five. You can only use each effect once per turn. Now, obviously, the idea is it's just going to give you a mil five. So you've got a rank um, rank eight of a mil four. You've got a rank six of a, a mil five. Uh, and the way you're going to be able to get into this is when you go down the Fiendsmith engine, whether you want to go down the generic route of going Moon into Requiem, and then the idea is that once you've made that play there, you're going to be able to turn a Engraver into a Necro Crypt Princess and then revive the Engraver, straight away giving you your two level sixes on the board that can then be overlaid to make the Reaper to mill you five. So this is going to be able to set up your graveyard with the Fiendsmith plays, as well as being able to set up that mill five without even needing to use your normal summon sometimes, depending on what you've ended up opening up with. And that's why you could arguably play Tracked at more if you wanted to. And then we just got some generic links in the form of the IP Mascarena leading to SP Little Knight. And then we also do play the one Saruja Skulldread. You can very easily play something like an Access Code Talker if you wanted to. You've got a bit of flex in the extra deck depending on which way you want to go. You could go for more rank eight plays, something like a Dingirsu if you wanted to. Um, it really is kind of up to you. Another rank six I like the idea of would be the Dampier Vampire Sheridan. Just because it's generic rank six and it gives you a bit more to do, especially if you're going second and you don't really need to mill your opponent for five. The fact, that, the fact that Dampier gives you that ability to send one of your opponent's monsters to the graveyard and then revive it is really kind of cool because you can then trigger the second effect of the zombie vampire which allows you to use a monster controlled by your opponent that has a level as a level eight. So all you'd need to do is you'd get into your rank six plays and then all you need to do is get a level eight on the board, steal one of your opponent's monsters, overlay into a zombie vampire and then this is gonna give you a mills as well. So if you're like, okay, well, I need to send one of my opponent's monsters to the graveyard first, and then use it as overlay material to get a mil four rather than going directly for a mil five. You've ended up removing one card from your opponent's board, revived it, used it as overlay material for vampire, milled four, got an additional monster on the board, and you're gonna have 3k there, 26 there, and then that additional monster on the board that can help you push for an OTK. And that's all kind of come through the engine off the back of the Fiendsmith plate as well. Which is why I feel the Fiendsmith engine is really kind of cool for the deck, and you don't need to go too heavy on it if you wanted to. Like you could prioritize the tracks over the engravers. As long as you have the one engraver, you're still gonna have access to it. On the flip side of that, if you're like, I don't want to play Fiends with at all, I don't own them, I'm not going to go and spend my money on them, you can very easily take out the Requiem, you take out the Necro Quip, you take out the Moon of the Closed Heavens, and then that's when you start putting in the Thunder Dragons, who can also contribute to the rank six, but it does give you a little bit more to work with, and that's something you need to keep in mind. So that's it for the entire profile. Keep in mind, Dampier is not involved with this. I'm just showing you as an option before everyone's like, oh, there's a 16 card extra deck. It's not a 16 card extra deck. I'm just showing you a different option. Uh, also for anyone, before you ask where I get these border sleeves from, these border sleeves come from uh, Sleeve Chief. They don't sponsor the channel. I just think they're really, really kind of cool and I just buy them uh, and I like to put them on different cards. So the reason I'm showing you a range in this extra deck is to kind of show you the different options you can get. Some of these are out of stock. They will be restocked eventually, I hope. Um, but yeah, before you ask that question, that's where I get them. Anyway, that is it for the entire profile. I hope this has given you a bit of an insight in the deck itself. What I like about the idea of it is it gives you a lot of flexibility. Like there are people that will play the tier element version of this deck, which basically requires you to play a few more fusion kind of bridges in order to set that up. But it does give you a little bit to work with. Uh, and like I said at the start of the video, the only real change I'd want to make directly to this particular build right here, right now, is getting a third release. I've just got to find where my third copy is, uh, and then I would very easily add it in. And there's a couple of flex spots that I might consider taking out once I've done a bit more testing to kind of give you the uh, overall out of the deck. The one big thing you do need to keep in mind with a 60 card version of the deck is that you want to be playing cards that are going to benefit you when you mill. You don't really want to be relying on a card like the Mole Chummy as you will be going on a very, very tight of will you draw in a 60 card deck or not. 
So what you want to be looking for when you're going to be sliding for this debt, as I know that will be a question that comes up, is you'll be looking at cars like Rise to Full Height that will benefit you when they're milled. You'd probably put in more that go that lasts. Um, you'd look at more cars like maybe even Breakthrough Skill. You just want cars that you're able to activate and then you're able to utilize in the graveyard as well. Like I said with this entire debt, the whole idea behind this is that you benefit every time you mill. You want to maximize your ability to benefit when you mill and that's what's going to make the deck as consistent and as strong as possible. Anyway, any questions at all, by all means, please put them in the comments down below. I'll always be happy to answer them for you. For now, as absolutely always, stay safe and of course, happy dueling.